Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and as part of my ongoing reviews of looking at this printer, there's a big office printer, uh, Epson Word Workforce 8690, I'm looking to see what you can use it for beyond an office printer. In particular, uh, I'm looking at scanning artwork. Now, I've looked at uh, printing cards and other things like that with it, and I'm in the process of doing a full review of it, albeit I'm not going to cover things like the auto document feed and all its office functions. I'm looking at what else a printer like this can be used as apart from an office printer. Now, one of the features of it is that it has an A3 or 11 inch by 17 inch uh, scanner on top. Now, large scanners are not common and they're quite expensive if you want a large scanner. Is the scanner of sufficient quality to use for printing artwork, copying artwork? Now, I'm going to use an example, a watercolour uh, picture here, uh, produced by a friend of mine a few years ago. And I've used this as an example in looking at scanning artwork for the Epson 8550 when I did a review of that. Much smaller printer. Um, you know, uh, in some ways, in terms of its colour range and things, perhaps better printer even. Certainly a cheaper printer, but not built for the volume this one is. Now, it may happen that you have one of these at the office where you work and you want to see what else you can do with it apart from just copy documents. Because you will may be fighting the IT department um, who may have set it up so you can't access some features. But, you know, always is good policy to make friends with the IT department if you've got them managing stuff like this. But here we have a an watercolour. Now, the colours in this are quite a range, and I happen to know from scanning that some of these are even slightly beyond the gamut of printing with this particular printer, but prints look okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just put it uh, onto the scanner, not using the auto feeder. We'll pop that in there, and it's set up for that. Now, first of all, I'm going to look at the Epson scanner software that comes with it. Not nearly as bad as you might think. It's actually quite capable bit of software. And um, I've got that running on the Mac here. And I've opened it up and it's fairly basic. We have some simple settings. Um, I've set the auto uh, detect document source so it won't try any tricks. Uh, single sided scanning and uh, document size auto detect. Uh, you can play around with these settings and see what works. For this test purposes, I'm only scanning at 300 dots per inch. The scanner will go up to 1200, which is what I'd suggest if you're going to work on the image and then use it for printing. Having that extra resolution gives you more detail, potentially makes for sharper prints. Now, if you're making smaller prints, the sharpening works in your favor, the reduction in size works in your favor and sharpens features. But always be careful when you're uh, scanning art, small artwork and printing it larger than it was produced because what were very fine brush strokes on the original can look like rather thick daubs on a print and it can lose a lot of its neatness. Uh, conversely, making them smaller makes all your work look uh, far more detailed and crisp. But anyway, I'll just run a preview scan of that and it links through to the scanner. The scanner has uh, woken up and uh, it's scanning the original and there's the image. Now that's just the preview scan. Uh, if I'm actually going to scan the thing itself I'm going to scan it and I'm going to export it to a TIFF file. Why a TIFF file? It's just easier to edit in Photoshop or something like Affinity Photo because you may well have to do a bit of editing. Have a look at the article I've written about the 8550 which got more details of the editing of this particular image when I used it. But anyway, there we are. We have a perfectly good reproduction. If you look at it in detail, is it good enough? Now, I'm going to say that for a lot of uses, um, this scanning software, as long as you remember to turn off all the color correction and all the enhancements that are available in the scanning software, you will get acceptable results. Acceptable results, but maybe not as good as you can get from it. Now, we're just using the normal scanner as it is here. 
there's nothing special about it. What I would suggest for better quality scanning, particularly if you're going to be doing artwork for sales and make use of the full size of this, this scanner here, 11 inch by 17 inch, is to use some software like ViewScan. Now ViewScan is a superb bit of software. It's relatively cheap. And if you buy uh, a, the 60, 70 pound version of it, um, you get lifetime updates. Um, I bought this years ago. I've had it continuously updated for now nearly 20 years. It supports every single scanner I've ever found. So if you are looking for a scanner for your artwork and you find one in a junk shop, with no drivers, no discs or anything with it, as long as it's not some obscure method of connection that you can't connect your modern computer, ViewScan will almost certainly support it and give you absolutely excellent results from it. Certainly as good as the original scanner software. Now I've used it to resurrect all kinds of old scanners and things, film scanners as well. It supports almost everything. One nice bit about ViewScan is that it lets me produce a printer profile. Now to make a printer, uh, sorry, printer profile, a scanner profile. To make that, I need to scan a target and then run it through the software. Now ViewScan has got instructions for doing that with uh, targets known as uh, IT8U targets. They're widely available. I don't have one here at the moment, so I can't test it with that. I do have, however, a color checker SG card from uh, X-Rite. Now that, or Calibrite as they are now, it's under that, under that name, I take a picture of this and then I can run it through um, I1 Profiler software and create a profile. Now, I, these cards are quite expensive, so I don't expect many people to have them. However, I have produced some profiles uh, which, like many profiles I make, are available for experimental use. So if you've got one of these printers and you want to experiment with one of my uh, profiles, uh, contact me directly at Northlight Images and I'll see about getting it. Uh, you just use it when you're uh, doing the scanning. Certainly in ViewScan, you can apply the um, setting then, the profile setting, or you can uh, apply it afterwards in Photoshop or something like Affinity Photo. Uh, however, you do need to know a bit about color management and stuff. Um, I will supply the uh, profiles but you're gonna to have to work out how to use them. It's not difficult at all, and it's part of basic color management anyway. Um, I may well actually do a small article about using those just to cover it as well. But if I want to scan this, scan it in here. If I haven't got one of these, I can produce a, a profile, not such a high quality, uh, because the quality is dependent on the number of color patches. Hence, the best profiles are using the proper scanner profile targets, IT8U targets. But you can even make a profile using one of these, which is a small original color checker card. That's the 24 color color checker card. That will make a profile as well. It won't be as good as a profile made with this or one made with an IT8U target, but it will certainly give you much better results for doing things. But anyway, that's that. If I want to scan here, I will use ViewScan. I'll just do a quick example of scanning with ViewScan. Now I'm running ViewScan on my Mac here and it's immediately connected up through to this. It's picked up the scanner on the network and it's connected to it. Now I can just do a quick preview scan as before. So the scanner has woken up, it's doing the scan and it's appearing on the screen there we go, how's that done? I've got the preview scan. I can crop it out, I can do it. It's much better quality than I get from the Epson scan. The Epson scan software is actually quite good. However, if you've got artwork you want to reproduce and you want to use a scanner like this, I'm not saying to print necessarily on this printer, but if you want to use the scanner on this for scanning larger artwork, Use ViewScan, you'll get excellent results from it. As you can see, I've selected a profile here, which I'm gonna use for it. And this is the one I made earlier. And uh, I don't need to do anything more than that. I can just do scan. Once again, printer wakes up, does a scan. 
and it's done. And that's it. Um, I've scanned artwork. It takes a few minutes to make a profile if you want to make one. Um, it's built into ViewScan, the profiling process, and ViewScan has excellent documentation for it. I have no connection with the software other than a near 20 year, 20 year happy user of the software. Uh, the guy who produces it is a hero. His aim is to stop scanners going to the scrap heap. And he's been doing that for nearly, well, over 20 years now. It's an excellent bit of software. So uh, do it. Uh, it's ViewScan, and I'll put details, a link to it in the notes for the video. But that's all it is. Um, I don't, I'm not concerned about the print quality or anything else. I'm just trying to make use of the fact that this has a rather nice scanner on top of it. Or more to the point, a good scanner, which is a big scanner. And that might be very useful for artwork. So there you go. Just one other bit I forgot to mention. There's a card printed on this particular printer. Thick card. There's the original. Look pretty similar. It's not a bad printer and scanner. Please do subscribe to the channel. Ask questions. It's questions I get asked that often give me ideas for extra bits of videos because if somebody asks a question, then I can guarantee that a dozen other people have thought of it but not asked. So that's how I get stuff. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, next time, well, I'll see what else we can do with this printer. Thank you.